Doing what I do for a living is hard too because I have to like invest and like spend money to make money. What's the definition of an influencer? It's a person that influences another. A person with the ability to influence potential buyers of a product or service by promoting or recommending the items on social media. Today we're talking all about Megan Lee, who is a mommy vlogger on YouTube. Recently her content has definitely changed. It's all about the hauls, the swipe up links, the affiliate codes, and viewers are just getting bored with her content. Noticed I've taken a step back towards showing a lot and sharing things um, and choosing what to share over some other things that I used to share. So I totally get that she has taken a step back and she's no longer showing as much of her kids and her relationship. She's definitely become more private. I think privacy is underrated and I think privacy is a good thing. I think YouTube moms should be more private and they shouldn't show all of those intimate moments of their kid's life. I totally get that and I'm fine with that. Recently, her content is just full of shopping hauls. She often complains about her finances on social media and says that she's struggling. She also wanted to put her son in daycare for a while now, but didn't because they didn't have the finances to do so. Recently, she said she found some room in her budget. She can now afford to send her son to daycare. She's hired an assistant. There's many reasons why I've like kept him home and haven't brought him to daycare, but one of the biggest things is just it's a lot of money and it's an expense and so we've just had to cut out some other things. And she's been doing so much shopping. Meg just stated in order for her business to grow, she has to spend money to make money. But later on in this video, I'm going to show you a way that Meg has figured out how to make money without spending a dime. One thing I would like to see more of is way less hauls and more of what you're actually doing in life. All of your videos are showing what you bought and you're talking about how hard mom life is. I understand you wanna be relatable, but it's coming off as if you're not happy and complaining. I would love to just see more of you out doing things and smiling and having fun. Honestly, I wanna see a video that doesn't have the word haul in it or buying something new. Please, in the most nicest and humble way, stop with the hauls. I cannot relate, and most of us can't either, with your lifestyle when it comes to spending so much money on clothes and stuff you don't even need. There were hundreds and hundreds of comments just like this on her video. I think a lot of YouTube moms are shopaholics. They use the excuse that they have to shop because they have to have products to recommend, to sell, to have swipe up links for, so they shop. But a lot of viewers don't want to see every haul. They don't want your content to be just hauls. Show us a haul every now and then. It's fun to see what people buy sometimes, but not so much. Stop pushing it down our throats. Viewers are tired of the hauls. Next haul for you is... They want to see something else. They think this is boring content because it's all that she's putting out. It can become too much. Doing what I do for a living is hard too because I have to like invest and like spend money to make money. I get what she's saying here to a point. Any small business owner, entrepreneur has to spend money on their business to make money. I get that. But I think she's using that as an excuse to shop. There are so many influencers out there who go to the store find a bunch of clothes, go to the dressing room, try them on, take pictures while they're in the dressing room, provide swipe up links for the clothing, and never buy a thing. There are ways to be an influencer without financially going into debt and putting your family in financial stress. Recently, Meg's been talking about supporting small businesses on Instagram. That's what it sounds like to the outsider looking in. But really, why is she doing this? Well, she figured out a way to, number one, promote a small business. Number two, provide swipe up links to earn income without buying the product. For supporting small businesses. And I mentioned this last week, but I want to do like weekly shout outs for small businesses. And I'm going to share a small business today with you that I'm really excited about. But if you are a small business and would like to work with me um have me try out your products 
let me know. DM me or you can email me here. But I want to do something weekly. And what Meg is doing here is so smart. She's shouting out a small business, which helps the small business. The small business owner sends her the product for free. She talks about it. She links the product. And if you guys swipe up and buy the product, Meg makes commission. There are ways to be an influencer and talk about products without making a purchase. And she figured out a way right here to do it. This isn't new. She's not the first person, the first influencer to do this. So when she says, I have to spend money to make money, that's not necessarily true. She figured out a way to make money off these small businesses without buying their products. This is good for the small business because they get a shout out by a big influencer. And it's good for Meg because she doesn't have to buy the product. She can review the product, provide a swipe up link and make a commission when you guys make a purchase. So if you guys are interested in shopping her wreaths, uh, you can even get some now for like Christmas time. Sometimes you have to buy a product in order to recommend it because you have to use it. But viewers don't want to see you buying stuff, putting your family in debt, just so you can provide a swipe up link and try to sell the product. No viewer wants to see that. That's not good content. It comes across as a money grab, especially when you're sharing publicly that you are having financial trouble and that you can't afford certain things in life and then you do all these shopping hauls. Meg provides swipe up links and affiliate links for products that she doesn't buy all the time. Look at the screenshots, for example. Personally, I would never buy from a screenshot like this because most of the time the influencer has never purchased all of these products. They're just recommending products that they've searched for. They've seen another influencer recommend. When buying a big ticket item like a car seat, stroller, or vacuum, I would prefer to have a recommendation from a person who's actually used the product. But I don't think influencers have to purchase every product that they provide a swipe up link for. Go to the store, look at the product, touch the product, show the product, research the product, and provide your viewers, your customers with valuable information about the product. Meg, I love the hauls, but what are they for? If I say I don't have any money, I don't have any money. When you say you don't have any money, you still have it and throw it all out the window for things you clearly don't need. What does it mean to you to not have any money? I'm honestly interested. You say you want to buy a house but can't afford it. Then you go ahead and buy a brand new car and shop for tons of clothes and other items for your house. And still keep saying you're tight with money. I just don't understand. You seem to only look happy when you're talking about what you bought, whether it's a new car, Botox, or purses. I haven't seen you say anything positive about being a mom. Your focus was on money, and I specifically remember you posting Instagram stories talking about how you weren't in a good financial position and were having a hard time. But then in the next video, you're spending thousands of dollars on things that don't matter. Purses and clothes don't bring any value to your life. I understand not wanting to share a lot of your life, but your videos are literally just hauls and it seems like no effort is being put in. Please listen to your subscribers. Draw inspiration from suggestions. Videos where you make a meal, not just a sponsored HelloFresh video. My suggestion is keep hauls and like to know it stuff on Instagram and show actual life content on YouTube, like your daily routine. I agree with that viewer. Keep your like to know it stuff on Instagram. That's what that's for. Of course, you can have your affiliate links in your description box and maybe bring something up every now and then, but not in every video. As a viewer and a mom myself, I like to see what other moms are doing throughout the day. I think that's great content, and I think a lot more YouTube moms should focus on that type of content. It's very popular. Viewers constantly say this is what they want to see and you don't have to exploit your kids by making that type of content. You just show what you do as a mom. The focus is on you. That's what other moms want to see anyway. I went to Social Blade to check out her YouTube account and you can see she gained zero subscribers for the month of August. In July of this year, she lost a thousand subscribers. The last time she gained subscribers on her channel was back in February of 2020 in the month of February, she gained a thousand subscribers. That's over a year ago. These are huge red flags that she should be paying attention to. I'm starting to like lose it mentally and I don't want to cry. 
um but mom life is just hard it's it's hard and i really want to get back into my business like i really want to start like focusing on my career a lot of things that i want to like work towards are you happy with the life you have right now meg responded very happy that my family is healthy and we are stable i get in my head a lot about where i am in life financially compared to other people and looking at materialistic stuff, like a bigger home, more money in the bank. And this is something that I just pray about often because I know I need to focus on what I have and what really matters. There's a roof over my head and my bills are paid and we are healthy. I ask God to help me recognize my blessings. We go through hardships and bumps in the road often in this life, but I know it's for lessons to be learned. I think her answer to this question sums up where she's at completely. She often compares herself to others. Trying to keep up with the Joneses is a horrible way to live. I know we all sometimes fall in that trap, but don't do it. Don't play the comparison game and don't try to keep up with the Joneses because the Joneses are probably in a lot of debt. But it hides a lot of dirt and we love it. So I'll have that linked for you guys down in the description. That's how she ends her videos. I'll have a link for you in the description box and then cuts the video off. Are YouTube moms shopaholics? I think a lot of them are. I've personally heard a lot of them say that they're shopaholics. And I think that they hide behind the excuse of, well, I have to buy things in order to recommend things and provide swipe up links. I have to shop to make money. I think they hide behind that a little too much. I might dig into this a little deeper and do another video in the future. If you're interested in that, or if you have any comments to add to this discussion, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your opinion. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.